The Wannabes, Season 2, Episode 7. My name is JD. Yo, it's your boy Wasabi. How are you doing today, JD? I'm doing pretty well, man. We had a hell of a day yesterday uh, with HNC relaunch in their own Season 2. Honestly, so much to talk about. We have a a lot to get into, so we should probably just hop right into it, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think before we hop right into it, uh, you want to list what we're going to be talking about today, JD? Yes, that's a good idea. I think uh, that, I think that's going to be good. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So today we're going to talk about H and C for about half the episode uh, because uh, Wasabi entered first tournament with the box. Um, I was going to give spoilers, but I I did. Uh, I commentated and TO'd my first TOing tournament since i was in high school (laughs) um and then we're going to talk about the event like kind of some behind the scenes hnc uh goals and and um kind of things it's going for our take on it our feedback on it Uh, just like old times you know (laughs) real classic look um then we're going to go over we, we played friendlies man two days ago um, yeah, two days ago. Give a little recap on that. Going to keep a running tally on how good Will's getting. It's a little scary. Uh, then a uh, look at Will's newest episode of... Uh, oh my god, what's it called? I'm sorry. Wow. Imperfect Protagonists. I had it wow. and I lost it. Wow. Okay, okay. It's not on the recap. It's not on the uh, thing I sent. Uh, right. Imperfect Protagonists on our Spotify and... Uh, YouTube. Apple Music, yeah, and YouTube. Check that out with our boy Ventus Matt. Um, if you like haiku and you like melee, it's like a no-brainer. Then a quick break, and then we have a bunch of questions. I love questions. Kinda yeah, like... we have a lot of questions. I'm most excited for that part, honestly. Yeah, that's always because because the Discord's been popping. Yep. Both in chat and in questions. So thank you to all the guys. We'll give you shoutouts then. Yeah, yeah. So um, we'll get to that. As a reminder, even if you just listen for three minutes, hop in our Discord, ask us a question. We are, we'll pop off and and be really excited to answer. We it. love questions. We love, love it, questions. Uh, I'll start with a question for you. How was your first tournament with the box? It was good. I think it was probably the best, like from a placing standpoint, the best I could have done, but you know, I'm pretty critical of myself. So like, I think I, there's a lot of stuff I still need to work on. It was super nervy. Like my heart hasn't raced that much in a long, long time. And for spoilers, I ended 65th place. So I won four matches, lost two, didn't make into top 64, but that wasn't the goal. It was just to enter and put myself out there and to be vulnerable pretty much. Um, But yeah, like I, (laughs) I really had to rely on just my melee knowledge and all the analytical stuff that I did over the summer and over the years to really pull me through because my tech skill wasn't there. Like there was one thing of like, you know, I'm still mental stack wise, still trying to perform things. And at times I was even too scared to like grab ledge because I thought I'd miss a wave dash. So (laughs) I really depended on just winning neutral and like reading my opponent and actually committing to reads that I normally wouldn't commit to. I think in the past I would play really passively, but there were reads where I'm like, you just have to go for it after after watching some some other Fox players play. And and I'm really happy with that. I mean, I got three Foxes, two Marths, and no complaints. Those were some of the worst Marth Foxes I've ever played. Not on their side, on my side. Like I just was like, Oh, you're not gonna crouch cancel this dash attack at sixty percent? Okay, <laughs> cool. Like I'm just gonna do it, you know, sort of thing. But um I think like from the critiquing side of it, I think I played too scared. Like I don't want to I don't really care about the sixty fifth placing, even though it was kinda I think as good as I could have gone. <laughs> like for context, I lost to Smokey or Kanagar and and Den, who's a really good Southern Fox. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of am debating on making a highlight reel of it because it was almost cool. Like I lost, I won two game threes uh, against two Foxes, then played Smokey, found myself like up 2-0 game one. 
or not up like up two stocks game one mm -hmm. with like two zero to deaths pretty much and then and then i got shat on i got completely shat on okay and 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 figured out and so i think i just don't want to play scared for future tournaments and like if i'm gonna die off of an sd or a miss ledge dash like so be it because i want to really just like if I'm committed to the box, it's about long-term growth, not short-term placings, really. Yeah. So that's kind of my biggest critique of it. And then just kind of getting used to that kind of tournament pressure. I definitely wasn't used to it. And like my tech skill definitely dropped because of it. But I was still able to do some stuff. So overall, I think mixed bag. But for like my first tournament, no complaints. Yeah, I, I can't say anything to complain about. You saw... Um... I, I'm seeing a, a game taken against Den. Yes, I popped off on that one, actually. Let's I go. popped off on that one. That's really uh, impressive. Just, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing, though. Like, I, I don't have the tech skill yet. And, like, being a relatively, in my mind, technical player, like, I think it was weird not being able to rely on that and having to kind of rely on understanding neutral positions and panic options that my opponent's gonna do and so i think but forcing myself to like rely on that is kind of giving me a newfound strength i think that mm -hmm. like i can't wait till i can kind of combine it once i get a little bit more seasoned with the box because i don't think that's gonna leave at all and i don't know overall like i saw a lot of homies pop off in this event too and i was kind of in the shower thinking about it and i don't know why but like I, I've been like pretty quiet about this because I, I, I am pretty committed about the box, but there are always going to be moments like even throughout this week as I've been getting better by net playing everyone where I'm like, shit, like, is this really the right thing to do? Like, especially with the new job and everything, like, can I actually like come back from this? And like, I don't know, in the shower, like I wasn't happy about my tournament. I, there are definitely lots to be improved on. Like, I don't think it's something that... I could be 65th isn't something I'm particularly like ecstatic about, even though it was my, I did like have a chocolate cake for it, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know. I was like, yeah, like everyone can have their, everyone, all the competitors deserve their like praise right now. And I'm not one deserving of praise right now, even if like people were like good shit on Twitter, which I still appreciate, you know? And, but I was like, I'll get, I'll, I'll get that praise at, at some point. Like it's a not, not if, but when sort of situation. And and there was sort of this calmness and acceptance that I'll pretty much just like suck balls for a while, <laughs> but but that I can get back up there. And I think that's what the 65th placing probably like meant most to me. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot that um, this tournament kind of represents for you, right? It's like, it's the actual kind of documented start to your new era in a way um it kind of shows uh, the, the fact that you played against kanagar is very interesting too because that's someone that you would go i think even back, with yeah back and forth with right we went one and one kanagar was my first solid win uh hnc season one so it's kind of kind of poetic that way Right. Where we had a game three nail biter with two Saint on the mic, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I, I I assume you do if you remember two Saint commentating. Um, yeah, yeah, and and um, being able to even though you lost against Den, who's such a killer. I mean, um, being able to to go toe to toe with him in that last set as well. Um, also, this could have been a tournament where you fell apart and and you know went like two and two or something, and this conversation would be a lot different. You know, so um, it's tough, but it's also it's almost like I wish you got beat worse. <laughs> you know, I think you would be you'd be on the grind harder if you had gotten your shit kicked in like round one or mm -hmm. something. Um, but it's also really great to see that um, you you uh, uh, surpassing my Falco is no fluke that this is like, OK, I, I don't have anything to really feel bad about if if he's running 65th of these tournaments. That's fine you know yeah yeah i mean the funny thing is i still feel like i got shit on like like okay. smoky i'll be i'll be honest like you know put me into the new year sort of thing <laughs> and and that's that's seared in my brain right now um 
same with den even like game three was a wash hmm. uh i clutched game two but game three was a wash um and i don't know like that's i don't want to be a 65th placer i think that's the biggest thing and this sort of i mean you know it being my close friend and and i, I think i play best and and i do have like a lot of philosophical thoughts and zen philosophy and all of that but i'm still a competitive asshole yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You got <laughs> at the end side. of it and you know and, and you know more than anyone you know yeah. like i don't like losing <laughs> in that sense but it's part of the process and i gotta lose all of 2021 if i gotta get better i think i think that's how I'll, that's that's the goal to get all of my losses out in 2021 hey fair enough but, yeah i mean you knew what you were signing up for switching controllers you know and it's obviously hard right after the tournament and especially if there's doubts of like oh shit that i so I think we talked we talked about it on the pod for sure. We're like you're gonna have a moment where you might regret it and you might want to go back or you know even if it's fleeting, even if it's just yeah like, yeah you know these these short moments of like man that didn't feel great you know what if I blah 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 but um from what I'm hearing like this is just another stepping stone and when we came into the call before we started recording you were practicing ledge dashes I'm like my son you know yeah <laughs> like, I mean you can I mean that's the thing is you have to. You just have to put in the work for it, I think. I yep. mean, like, the person that shadow around me the most this week, and I'm sorry it's not your Falco, JD, uh, was Panos. I got I got a really sick stream session with him yeah. uh, two days ago. The guy shadow around me. Mm. Shadow around me, too. <laughs> you know, and so, you know, someone that I've... Who's a good friend and a good competitor and rival, I think. Someone who... We went toe-to-toe for so many months, I think. Mm. Uh to get completely shit on <laughs> in a matchup that's arguably my best, I think, was pretty eye-opening. So so shout outs to Panos and and, and Kanagar for kinda searing those losses in yeah. my memory. Because I think that's what's driving me forward right now. Good. Yeah, I'm happy that you didn't just like play out of region people. Um like it's it's really important to have that reference point of like where you were before and and now. It's like the only way to to see objectively kind of a skill gap you know of of yourself um so i think i think you're doing everything right like this is looking sick and people are are, are talking like no, people are noticing you specifically um what well dark gen x at least he i mean he, he notices everything to be fair he's, he's dark gen x is the all-seeing eye of he, of ranking he really is like i don't know oh man it was like this guy uh, i think his name was pizza man or something and yeah. I'm like, oh, I think on stream next we're going to have uh, Equal versus Pizza Man. And he goes, oh, Pizza Man number two in Alabama? And I, like, shut off yeah, my he's, mic he's and crawled eye. into a tombstone. Yeah, that guy, he knows everything. But he was definitely noticing, like, yeah, Wasabi's, like, already approaching where he was before <laughs> on the box. It's, like, stupid quick. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think the funny thing... Um, also, quick tangent, shout outs to my boy Dargenix for beating Zuppy yesterday. Oh my god, he was he was popping off. Dude, yeah, he, yeah. He had uh, an insane day. He uh, deserves it. He's such a good player in my eyes. Yeah. I'm always a big Dark Genix fan. As as big of a Dark Genix fan as I am a Miso fan. If it uh, comes to Tri State Boys. Interesting. Alright, we gotta have them duke it out. Yeah. But I was gonna say, I think what's funny is that I think sixty fifth on the box was like the best i could have gotten honestly mm. but i think 60 i could have just also like 65th on the controller losing to den and smoky is so, also like so much in the realm of possibility also like I, isn't that the crazy thing yeah 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 and i think i that mirroring of like i wouldn't say 65th is my worst placing because those two players are incredible but it's so possible too. I think that that's what feels so surreal about it, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's an important milestone. Um, we are we need to to hop into the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hate to say let's, it. Let's my, get to your side. To my, my yeah, side. wow. <laughs> but to it's a, take it's over a time the conversation. Thing. It's a time. No, no, thing. no, 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 no. Talk. It's a time thing. We got a lot to talk about. It's so we got a lot to talk about. So, so let me start this off then. Sure. I saw you on the mic. With my boy Gerg commentating, like, the, you know, winner's quarters to make it in to top eight. And that was hype. I was popping off for you. I was popping off for Mook. But how did it feel to you? Kind of to be back on the mic and to kind of be behind the scenes as a TO. Honestly, 
I mean, the two sides of it were so back and back to back, right? So, uh, uh, time wise, it was in the morning. Like we start the tournament started at three, so at around two thirty, um, there was a, a small call. It hacks in, in Dark Gen X, um, Zane, the other the other tos that were involved, and we were just uh, Jeremy, of course, and. <clears throat> Just kind of like doing the game plan of like what was going on, and we were kind of I, I hate to say it, we were kind of flying by the seat of our pants. It was the first event. Um, a lot of weight was put into uh, Dark Gen X because he had so much experience and he was confident. So we just kind of ran with it, and I was kind of put in charge of uh, calling matches up until top mm-hmm. sixty four, and also dealing with like to stuff on the back end. And I was overwhelmed, to say the least. Like, I was really, like, both screens, I was trying to optimize, like, what was going on. Had to keep the stream up on one. I had to keep Smash GG, and then I had to keep another Smash GG of the of the complaints coming in. But I had the wrong thing, so I didn't actually see anything come in. I had Discord open. So it was like, I was seriously, like, thrown to the wolves, trying my best to, mm-hmm. to actually be a good TO. Um you know in any any objective kind of um outlook i did not do a great job but um dark gen x during his tournament run would come in for like five minutes solve the entire backlog of problems and then go back to his (laughs) his next game and over time i'm like fuck this guy keeps winning like stop (laughs) stop (laughs) doing well dude just fucking lose oh brutal man brutal and um, thank God we had Shane in there too, who who was um, the TO in the first season of Agency, as we all know. <coughs> That's my boy. <laughs> shout Love outs, me some shout outs to Shane. He's also doing a lot of graphic design work um, for the event, so just kind of killing it. But he he was in there too, just uh, such a such an important player for those for for lag tests and all that stuff. So it was really like in the beginning, kind of, kind of tough. I didn't really know what to expect, but um, as it came closer to top sixty-four, we got a bit of a flow going. Um, kind of uh, tightened the screws around our process, um, and I was able to, you know, feed some. I think some pretty good matches for the for the beginning parts, and then top sixty-four started. Uh, handed off. The commentary to me and greg and the first match dude the first match was not being streamed in discord to us so we thought they were still setting it up but it was going on like jmook magi was happening and we were talking about some bullshit like what's That's it funny what is it like what are we here for greg and greg's like oh man there's so much on the line but there's no money i'm like yeah dude we're here for clout you know like we're here and i'm just like trying to you know develop Stall. yeah and and jeremy's like yo dude are you guys watching this at all? I'm like, nope. Because we are not being, we're not seeing anything. And he goes, ah, fuck. <laughs> then he starts the stream <laughs> on Discord. And we're like, all right, game two. <laughs> like, it's just so, it, I think it was, we played off it, you know, just like, hey, fuck it. You know, that, shit happens. But there must, and I didn't have Twitch open for that either. Because it would be distracting. But mm-hmm. the, I, I'm sure people on Twitch were like, who the fuck are these people? Like, not paying attention to JMook taking game one over Magi, you idiots. Like watch this, but um, after that it was I think pretty smooth. Um, Greg is as soon as I I knew that I was commentating with him, I I knew it was gonna be like like my my anxiety went down. Um, his strengths are so much on like having his having the energy, and he feeds off the game so much, and that's like what I respect most in a commentator. I think is someone who like who's there for what's on the screen and he's really good at calling out interesting things that are happening. And so when, when he's doing that, that kind of fills a weakness of mine is like, I, I want to call everything out, but it's just like, because so many things happen, he's able to actually get that out and be like, Oh shit. Did you see that slide off? And I'm like, yeah, dude, that was fucking sick. Like we just hyped off each other really well. So, yeah. I thought that yeah. you guys, I thought you guys paired really well together, honestly. I feel like it was the first time where it it felt like, oh, like, there are two people commentating this. Not, like, just, like, you know, 
one person talking on the mic with another person talking on the mic. Like it felt like honestly like a duo. So I definitely I know I was telling you this off off script, but I want to see more of you two together, especially because I think you guys feed off of each other where in my head, like Greg is able to kind of reel you in back to the screen Mm. where you can kind of weave these like either really funny scenario stories or scenery like you can paint a picture, but sometimes the picture isn't what's happening in the game. Yeah. And so Greg, Greg brings you back, like crashing back with that energy into the game. And so, like, especially when I was watching J Mook versus Zane's Fox to make it into winner side of top eight, I thought that was really incredible. Where you guys were so, it felt a little scar and toefish in in my head, and and I think like definitely, you know, two greatest commentators. So definitely very budget scar and toe right now. <laughs> Thanks, but. <laughs> But Scar the Toph, nonetheless, you know, like, I think that, like, you guys fed off of each other and, like, there was this, like, fun banter that was, like, in between the sets and during the sets when there was, like, a little bit more of a pause. Mm. But, like, you know, there would be times where it's like, did you see what J-Mook did with that SDI or did you, he hits the needles again, this should be it. And, you know, I think that was really, really good, too. Yeah, I, I actually... It was very focused. I felt like I, because that's, like, the trust and... and... It almost feels like because I'm I'm a huge I love doubles I love playing doubles right mm-hmm. and there's this thing of when I'm able to my favorite uh, teams partners are chess and pig notably two floaties right so yes um, yep. and the thing that I like the most is that I trust them to tether me right like I I trust them to be able to that so I can like go in and be disruptive and and mess around on platforms and and you know do try to like just you know get into the middle of them and i know that my my teammate has my back and i felt so similarly there where like if i felt if i if i felt something come into my head you need to be able to like trust that the things that you you're thinking about are your voice and to to carry with your voice and to not um to to not tone it down and i think you you put it really well where he was able to bring me back to the game in in a lot of ways and that's why i i felt so comfortable it's like he was there for the game we had our back and forth and it was it, i felt in a flow state for a lot of it honestly mm-hmm. um it was it was so much fun and and i'm not just saying that either like it it really felt like we um contributed to a tone like we, we did our part, our, you know, whatever commentators' parts are in a tournament, like 15, 20%, 10%, whatever. Like, the matches mm-hmm. were there. We we were there for it. Um, and hopefully we didn't distract besides that first game where we were literally just, like, not talking about it at all. I'm sure it was a sick match. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. But... And I think, you know me, like, I, I love both of you guys. I, I, I love Gerg, I, I love you, and, but I would also, like, not hold back if I thought you guys weren't, like, a good pairing. Mm. But again, like, knowing you and having done over 100, maybe over 100 episodes with you, getting like... There. Getting there, getting there. Getting there, getting there. Um, you, you get lost in the sauce a little bit, and you, you need someone to kind of bring you back. But also, like, getting lost in the sauce is what kind of makes the conversation fun. I mean, it's the reason why everyone loves the JD rants. Very rarely do I hear, Wasabi, I love your rant. No, it's always like, yo, I love JD's rants. It really resonated with me. I'm like, yeah, cool, 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 cool. I'm, <laughs> I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I listened to it also. Glad glad I was there, buddy. <laughs> well, I need... I that, That's a strength and a weakness, because I need... I need a partner that like keeps me there, you know, like I think that's why me and you work so well. It's a similar dynamic of of like grounded versus like that chaotic energy I could sometimes have. But. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, I, I hope to see more. I think if you guys could request to be together all the time, like that is an HNC staple in the making in my head. Hey, man, I, you know, I, I'm talking to Hacks and this is something this kind of goes into our general discussion. We're, we're, we're kind of... um. We're kind we're of flowing through here. this. Yeah, we're we're, yeah, yeah. we're getting through. But that was pretty much my perspective. To and commentary was a blast. Uh, so general discussions, like pretty much on the back end of everything, um, <laughs> coming from the commentary route, I I have a rare opportunity to um, 
kind of pitch ideas to hacks right Mm -hmm. and he is um he's not someone that that is swayed easily on opinion in in my experience like he uh, yeah. on things he's not he has nothing to, he's actually really good about like if he doesn't know something he's just like bro i don't i don't know this like what you know what do i do but if he has his vision it's like good luck changing it right yeah he's very particular is is the best way i, I love aziz no, like, yeah. having worked with him played with him he, he does his things in a way that he knows how to do it and and if he knows so about it then he has opinions about it yeah and, and frankly, that's really important on a, a for leadership in this role. Like, yes, you, I agree. You actually you need to know what you're going for. Um, and so, from my perspective, like I'm I'm realizing that this like after the tournament last night, I snuck out. Um, Ashley fell asleep. I like snuck back into my computer room and was like drafting a business plan of things to pitch to to the tournament at large because I'm like, mm-hmm. oh shit, this is like this is getting me going. This is using my business development background and my passion to, Mm -hmm. to, you know, now I'm like, Oh shit. How do we, how do we start looking for sponsors? How do we uh, expand viewerships? Like, what are we doing with our subscribers? What's our plan here? Like I'm, I'm realizing how much this event could be like a, and, and hacks has big uh, views for it too. I mean, he's hella inspired. To make this the next big thing. Um, oh yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, there's an agency ranking coming out for sure. I'm I'm one hundred percent. I haven't heard anything, but but if you have Dark Genix and yeah. on a team, you know you know there's going to be an agency ranking at some point. Yeah, and what's wild is that that's enough for people to enter. Like, we're we're you know I went on a on the clout rant during J Mook Magi. I'm sure it'll be on YouTube because it's in the middle of, of the first game, but. Um, really, like, people are here to make a name for themselves. And it's always been that way. You know, when the money was here, when it wasn't, MLG era, et cetera, like, it's always been about making your mark and proving yourself. And now it's it's that plus, like, getting the, the sponsorship, like, fulfilling your dreams. And that needs to come from the attention, the clout. I mean, look at Mook's Twitter. It, like, tripled his following in a day. Oh, 100 percent And and before we get on the JMOOC train, because we will not be able to get off of it. I let know, us rewind. Right. <laughs> yes. Let us rewind. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> that that Aklo, everyone's household favorite taunting fox East Coast, is sponsored by OS. Yeah. The the venue of original HNC season one. Mm-hmm. So let us not forget. That that the first J Mook, Aklo, <laughs> got a sponsorship off of his HNC runs. It's so funny how Aklo um, was the hotness. He still is the hotness. He still is. I mean, he got third. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of hype, it's always about the next thing. It's like how it's always about the next kid. How quickly we forget that this guy <laughs> came in and was slaughtering people, and now it's just like, oh yeah, of course. Oh my God, Jake Lu- J-, J Mook's doing this well against. Aklo? And it's like, bro, Aklo was just like, bro, yeah. let him keep the, he won, goddammit, let him keep the podium. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> we have both of them on our 1v1 series, check that out. But uh, regardless, yeah, we could, we, Dude, could... we are so good at getting the up and coming players. I gotta, I gotta give a shout out to us. <laughs> dude, we, we have it on lock. We dude. seriously Think about do. all the players that have popped off. Aklo, J Moot. We got Mog. Ginger. We got Swooper. Mog. Turn down for wall. <laughs> yeah, that's Let's go. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Oh my god! All right, now we're just popping off for ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Back to J Mook. Back to the J Mook train. <sighs> no, no, we we're not on the J Mook train yet. Remember? Oh, okay, okay. Where do you want? To... Where Where are we taking? Where's intermission going? All I'm saying before intermission is that um, this event is had such a a great opening like it it averaged around 2k 1.7 thousand viewers something like that throughout the entirety of it and that was a seven hour stream like that is some serious attention and being in the you know having the opportunity to like somewhat sway opinion and try to to move the needle on like what it can be as frankly a business um is really exciting 
you know, and, and it kind of invigorated me to, to, if, cause I'm, I'm full volunteer. I'm not getting paid. I'm, I will not get paid off this, but yeah, yeah. what I will hopefully get is the experience to leverage that into possibly a career. Like that's, that's the excite. that's the juice, you know what I mean? And that's the really cool part. Yeah. And that's always been your journey too, I think. And, and that's the exciting part about it. So this feels like the next step. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so in terms of a business plan, I don't think <laughs> maybe 1% of what I wrote will actually get through, but um, let it be known that Hacks has big ideas. He This is obviously not a one-off, and uh, there's a lot to look forward to with the series. Yeah. It's going to be really exciting. I, I agree. And now, as before we hop on the Jamie train, <laughs> I have to say – one last thing about HNC as a whole. Please Not go. only did it run super smoothly, super quickly, but that custom battlefield stage is nice. I, I have to. I, when we get back from the break, I'll I'll look through who made it. Um, oh, I already have the Twitter. I'll link it to you. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, great. you know, talking about a break, you know, JMook obviously is a shout out for this week. He's our boy. He comes from upstate origins like us. We've seen him grow up. We've seen him. Is he legal yet? He's not legal to drink alcohol yet, is he? He's under 21 still. I think so. Anyway, he's, he's been beating our asses for a while. But you hold a special uh, relationship with him being a, a rival in upstate New York. While I was relatively unknown back then. There... But I'm so happy that yeah. he finally clutched it. Because we have seen him lose to Triff Game 5, to the Lost Vods of Fiction Game 5, and and I'm just happy he finally did it. So that that's all I have to say for this. Yeah, he had a killer tournament, and um, even when he got up to Zane, beat Bobby Big Balls off stream, beat Magi on stream 3-1, um, was already kind of crushing it, and then had the opportunity to stop the... Um, the hubristic number one with his secondary coming in trying to trying to shake everything up. How dare he? Yeah. How dare he? And Zane's Fox was looking nice, man. It, it was. Oh no, I'm taking notes. Yeah, I, I took notes. He was hitting the correct things, but uh, Jmook with sadly I didn't see him. I was so ready to see him down tilt a drill. He he just kept up. I was waiting for that. The Jmook anti air dr- uh, down, down tilt, tilt is. Is so good. Yeah, we both know it. We both know it. <laughs> we know. Dude. We know it well too well, dude. <laughs> I've, I've hit it. I've... <laughs> oh man, yeah. But uh, regardless, he he took it in a, such an exciting fashion, and um, it's really great to see him get the recognition that he's deserved for a while. Um, the it's a it's a, uh, a very um, obvious story at this point. But being from upstate New York, it's hard to get that opportunity. Really. And for a while, it was hard to get practice, and then netplay became around. But then it was still hard for him um, to find especially with his style. Yeah, with his style, like rollback brought it back. Like the dude does not miss tech chases, and he is—he's cooler than Spark, in my opinion. I love watching Jmook, and I love Spark. Don't get me wrong, but I love Jmook more. Jmook is fast, Um, and he was getting—he was getting West Coast people. I saw Slime mention on Twitter, like, "Oh yeah, holy shit!" If you got the Slime approval, you know you're a cool sheik. Yeah. He, uh, he will shit on you if you're lame, but uh. <laughs> yeah, arguably the second the second greatest achievement he's done to date, outside of winning <laughs> Brooklyn Kumite three with a thirty three and one win loss record. Yeah, I would say probably. Anyway, that's a little bit of history. Number one is no is winning a Brooklyn Kumite. Number two is getting slimes approval. Number three is breaking his win streak against uh, his lose streak against me. And, and number four is fourth place at HNC. Number four, yeah. Number four, yeah. Very fitting. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to take a break, uh, but we're going to play a quote from JMook's 1v1 interview now. Mm-hmm. So check it out. And we also just posted a recent tweet about it. So if you want to f- listen to the full episode, it's going to be there. But roll it. Um, did that kind of upstate mentality stick with you too? Because I know you and you and your squad hosted a few tournaments. Um, how do you feel TOing? Um, is a do you feel like that's a factor in your in your upcoming or what's your experience with that um i definitely think that from watching especially mana over the years it just it taught me that 
you have to make do with what you have. It's as simple as that. You have to go to these events, be present, and make the most out of it, which means that you're going to have to take, you know, you're also going to have to take care of yourself as well. But, you know, I, I know that you, you and I both saw him as one of the best examples in that community at the time. And he, he just taught me how to... Um, just not be too hard on yourself, but also just. Oh, what's the word? You can't really. Uh, you can't put on these expectations on yourself and and be selfish when those expectations don't pan out. Right. You have to do. You have to, you know, take yourself out of your your experience, your shell, and be okay. Well, what am I doing for the environment around me, and how can I make that better? I think that's what he taught me that I've held on to the most. Okay, and we are back. So that was a really sick quote, and again, I put out a tweet on the Wannabe's Twitter of the full episodes, because it's one of our first ones, so you'll have to scroll you know, down for a while to find it. But uh, if you want to check out the full episode of JMOOC on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Podbean, we have it, and the links are on our Twitter. Oh, yeah. But now we have some questions. We have a few questions, JD. So you want to kick us off with the first one? Yeah. So the first one comes in from uh, a new member of the Discord. Shoutouts to Cypher003. And the question is, did we ha watch Hax's video on his vision of 2021 melee. There's another part of the question that we talked about earlier about if we entered or not. We talked about that, but Hex's video was kind of laying the foundation, right, of what yes. HNC was going to be, but also kind of what he envisioned the next two years for melee, mm -hmm. uh, what it should be. And um, he it was required viewing for anyone involved in HNC to <laughs> to, to watch the whole Excellent thing. give you homework. It was homework. Um, yeah, but I mean, he laid it out. A, a TLDR is basically that 2021 will be heavily um, slippy centered, at least until because it's hard to know when it's going to be safe with the vaccine rollout. Um, still a new virus. Like there's still a lot to learn, so it's hard to plan exactly when. And in 2021, there likely won't be any big events until later in the year, right? So um, he looked at region-locked slippy events like HNC to be the um, supplement to our ranking system. He believes that ranking is important and viable with, um, with how slippy comes in. So that's like the next year, right? Um, well, I think you have some opinions on that, no? Or, or was it the other half that you had opinions on? Um, yeah, so I think in terms of 2021, I think, like, I, I just wouldn't expect any events happening. Like, just, like, IRL events. Like, so I agree with Hacks there. Like, it's just, like, no one's gonna prior like, like, no one's, like, even the first major will be dicey. Like some people just won't be in attendance. It'll be like a while before people feel confident going to events and like sharing a hotel room with five other five other homies, you know? Right. And I think that's gonna be be a big thing. But aside from that, I think I had more takes on 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 some of the later questions actually. But with the Hax's plan, I definitely agree. I think that it would be also cool to see like a top if it does become region locked, I would I would really really love to see like top fifty West Coast, top fifty East Coast, and not necessarily be like indicative of like this is the global top one hundred, but like regionally this is like what it's at, and I think that would be interesting from a storyline perspective also because then you bring back that East Coast versus West Coast rivalry too. That's so I think yep that's gonna be really cool. And that was in Hax's video as well. He talked about kind of old school crew battles. And, yes yeah and how you know there could still be events that would kind of bring everyone together it would be you it would be known ahead of time that like there might be some competitive integrity lost um for the for the sake of viewership but that would actually be so much more hype if it was like 
the you know it's not mango zane every tournament it's like maybe zane's running on on the east coast and mango's running the west coast and then it's like the big clash on these these particular events um yeah he, he talks about i think he said um i don't remember the exact word but pretty much like summit style events um that bring everyone in with like you know a little more uh a little less, yeah, competitive integrity and, and connections might be sacrificed for the sake of viewership, but... Yeah, um, and I think yeah. also, like, from a usability standpoint, like, Zane and Mango will be fine, because they play already together a lot anyway, so, like, mm. from a Summit-style thing, like, not only do they regularly play each other, so they're used to that connection, compared to, say, like, I don't know, like, a two Saint s fat sort of thing, right? But mm-hmm. also... Like the other thing is like they they are maxed out on fiber. They are fibered out of their minds, I'm sure. <laughs> you know. So so yeah. like you're also letting the players with the best resources to play long distance duke it out in this sort of environment. Versus like I think if you open a national slippy tournament, like you're gonna have people who are just college kids, you know, having their brothers and sisters, you know, watching Netflix on the side, causing lag, right? Or not lag, but rollback. Um, right, right. And so I think having the players with the resources to do those long distance connections doesn't even take away from competitive integrity, considering that they like probably practice with each other, you know, on a weekly basis. That's a great point. Yeah, exactly. So um, that that's kind of the gist of at least the 2021 segment. He also talks about 2022. You know, I, I think he would even admit that it's clearly harder to predict a year in the future versus the next 12 months. Um, but he pretty much says that Slippy could be a viable um, a viable thing even when IRL tournaments continue. And, and I'm prone to agree. I think it really opens up, um, you know, there's still some barriers to entry. You mentioned internet, um, having a computer that can run it. You know, there's still <laughs> getting a controller is expensive. Like there's still some barriers, but you don't have to, get a plane ticket you don't have to get a hotel you don't have to put yourself perhaps at risk if you still think that there's you also don't you know we used to get the flu we used to just be like yeah tournament flu that's what happens yeah you know so like there's they're having the ability to have these these tournaments that with rollback are still just great melee being played um there's no reason why it should go away just because irl events come back and I, i i agree with that um, how it affects rankings is going to be a tricky conversation where yeah. I, I think you, you said that that's the part where you kind of, you had, you had an uh, opinion on, no? Yeah. Yeah. I think with rankings, it's going to be, well, my, <laughs> a funny hot take is just let dark gen X do it. Yeah. <laughs> I would trust anything. If dark gen X, you know, if I'm, if I'm the oldest and dark gen X told me I was the youngest in my family, I would, I would take it. <laughs> I would I'd be like okay I guess I am. He's like look but, at uh, look at the stats you're actually look at uh... look at the stats you're actually younger than your sister. Yeah, exactly. uh, but <laughs> all jokes aside, yeah, I think ranking is going to be the hardest take on it. But it it might also be a chance to kind of focus on you know on on regions and, and kind of build storylines because like kind of melees in a place and this kind of leads to Moses' question. So shout out to to Moses for for this question. Good segue. Yeah, great, great segue, um, <laughs> which is where should Melee be headed in 2021, in your opinion? And so I think for this, like, I think we're really just get it building up storylines still for 2021, you know, like, I, as Mango said uh, in the doc or on his stream somewhere, you know, like, kind of after like 2015, 2016, you know, from like 2018 to 2020, You've, people have just been kind of like getting up to speed with things right like kind of just getting up to speed the five god era is kind of over their new kids on the come up like zane and cody and and they're not there yet and now they're starting to get there zane's already there obviously and and there's a changing of the guards and i think that storyline will continue in 2021 especially with the advent of slippy and you'll see players like jmook and aklo rise up i'm sure there's going to be some from the west coast as well we got solo battle from from Europe as well and mm-hmm. Pip Squeak. And I think it's about this changing of the guards, and that's really where I see melee heading. And you'll also have legitimate online warriors, which is something that traditional FGC people have that we don't have. And I think that's gonna be 
really interesting going to 2021, especially as we saw with the Slippy League. And this is probably, this is the hot take I wanted to get to, which is that it, like, it will affect both fan bases, region, like, region, like, where the region sides with, and also will bring back East Coast and West Coast, and then it will also affect Summit voting. Hmm. Like, that's the thing. Like, it won't surprise me that one day people will side over Jaymu because they've only seen him play online versus a very established player like Lucky in Summit voting, you know, yeah. who is their IRL and you've known him through his history and you have these online fan favorites. And I think that is something that is a new thing that we haven't had yet that I'm very excited for. Absolutely, dude. There's, there's so much to go off with what you said and um, kind of how that fills into what I, what I think about all the time. And, yeah, getting these new players, um, really getting them clouded up, you know, really, because that's at this point, it's it's just the way it is with with any entertainment industry. It's just about the attention that you have rather than the the pure skill, right? So mm-hmm. we've seen so many barriers come down. People are understanding like what routers they need, what what quality internet, and with region locks, now they're going to be less afraid to put themselves out there because they'll say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm more likely to stick around in the tournament if I don't have to play someone from Arizona when I'm in Maine, right? So I think uh, uh, Hacks had it very much right when he talks about region locking being more important than what people think it is right now. So I, I see a cultural shift as Hacks kind of swipes the microphone away from uh, other voices who are maybe dissenting. And saying like, no, this is how the this is how it needs to be, and here's the proof, right? So with that, we saw Jay Mook being, you know, the first person to come out of that immediately, benefiting from that decision. Um, and he's clearly not going to be the last one. You mentioned Solo Battle, I think, is another really great example. And what what I see happening in 2021 is uh, content distribution being um, understood a lot better by everyone. One of the main trends I've been seeing on Twitter recently was um, the people on on you know people with these YouTube channels being like, "Hey, let, help me hit twenty five thousand before the end of the year," and it was a, a bunch of top players really pushing their YouTube channels, and you see it in the algorithms too. I'm seeing a lot more Wizrope, seeing a lot more IBDW. I'm seeing more videos from these top players who decided to double down on their stream and hire an editor and to actually pump out their content. And I think as that model becomes more adopted by people who realize like that is the metagame right now, like that's the move, you know, I think that um, that's going to trickle down. Uh, Sponsorships are going to get on board and it's going to not even be the player's decision. It's just going to be like, hey, we got you an editor. (laughs) Just keep streaming. We'll make your videos. You know what I mean? And that is going to be um, the kind of undercurrent pushing melee even further and further forward and into the mainstream it's i think content is the absolute end game for melee in 2021 and that comes from the storylines that you're talking about tof going full-time into streaming and, and i love tof's channel tof's the best I absolutely love it i love this channel tof is low-key goaded dude like he maybe not even low-key he's goaded it's about damn time it's it's about damn time right and and having that be like you know he does this he's not pure melee but he's he does a lot of melee talks he does a lot of you know having players on stuff like that so i see 2021 people are finally getting around to like yeah let's just keep pushing content out and doing what we love and the players will keep playing and the tournaments will keep happening. Um, and we'll just get off, you know, first of the series, get over 500 players. You know, it's yeah, it's, it's just going to keep going up. I agree. And it wouldn't be a wannabes podcast and you wouldn't be JD if you didn't bring up content. So I'm happy <laughs> that you brought up that point because I did not see it that way at all. But now that you mentioned it, I hard agree with it. And mm-hmm. I think also to add on to that, and you, ta- you said it in the beginning, but there's the breadth of content that we're going to see out of 2021 is yeah. going to be insane. Like, you know, I love I love Cody. Cody's a homie. But I really have been impressed with his channel and mm-hmm. been really engrossed with these, like, honest talks with players and about mentality. And 
because it's so authentic to him. Yeah. And he's so authentic to himself and the editor, whoever's doing that in Panic Global knows that and they're capturing that. And I think, and it's not these like, oh, these are the highlights or this is the thing. And and people are finding their own voice in the content. Whereas you said like Toph is really great of it too. Like I think he's finding his voice with this community. Mike Hayes too also is making a lot of content in a very different way than ibdw is right like ibdw yeah. it's like him on discord with a guy and it's almost just clipping it clipping it clipping it mike hayes is like maybe a little bit more strict scripted maybe a little bit more storyline based and that's great like i i love that he's starting the out with the box too tofe's kind of just doing his thing like 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 just like get aklo a fucking editor yeah like just like have him be the most bm taunting hype beast <laughs> out there you know and like <laughs> You know, yeah. and like that's Aklo. You know, Aklo is this try hard fox trying to be on the come up. Someone document that for God's sake. He's streaming twenty four seven. Right. Like to be able to stream your tournament runs and then do well on your tournament runs is something in itself. And so, like, I'm yelling at this point, but like, <laughs> I am very excited about the breadth of content that we'll see. And I think, like, having tried to do content before, like, and like. It's you're so doing apparent it, you're, that you're literally doing it right now. By the way, <laughs> you love meta commentary, but yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, um, well, it's true. But like, I couldn't do the stuff that like Akilo or Cody are doing. You know, I mm-hmm. love more like recording and then kind of figuring out how I want to structure it and, and stuff like that. But like, everyone similar to their play styles has their own has their own form of content that they're kind of lean closer to, and I think that is what we're going to see is people explore and find the voice rather than being like, oh, people do, Ma- you know, people like Mango Axe Wednesdays. I'll just do that too, you know? Like, yeah. you won't see any more cookie-cutter content pieces, and you'll see content pieces of authenticity. And so, yeah, that's my rant. Yeah, I I, I want to keep talking about this, so I will. I think the <laughs> biggest thing, and this is something that you and I have pushed about authenticity is, like, it's and the reason we started the podcast, um, or at least you know one of my big goals is about finding our own voice, and through content that's how you kind of build your your brand. But it's mostly about like this is who I am by the stuff I put out and who I am on stream and and what I choose to talk about and being validated for that. Where it's not about needing to like be the oh Scar hasn't been streaming let me do a Scar thing let me be the next Scar or let me you know this prove to be good let me let me do sick combos on stream like none does you're not gonna be none <laughs> you know you're not gonna be Scar and and nor should you be because no one else can be and no one else is and so with all these things I mean I I'm so happy that the mix up started right like. Yes. Radar and Walt. I was just thinking about Walt. I yeah. Was, yeah. And I, I've, you know, one of the first things I started when we were like episode 10, I'm like, dude, this is easy. Podcasting is not as hard as people make it out to be. I want every Melee player to start a podcast. How sick would it be if like, if it was, there was the 6-4, which is like. Yeah. The 6-4, sick listen. name, by the way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. The 6-4 is a must listen. But like, if like Cody and Fiction had a podcast. Oh, you that know would what be I mean? so good. Like, Throw Two Saint in there. Throw Two Saint in there. Perfect. Dude, Absolutely perfect. I think Two Saint would, yeah, like Two Saint and like like Mike Hayes needs a podcast and like I, I want I want to hear Lucky talk more. Like, I, Get people podcasts. Get people yeah, talking. Like you could have Drunk History with Lucky and Mango. Like imagine that. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. Fucking... I know. I know. Someone DM Lucky and give me the credits to it. Like, but, yeah, sick idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. But like, really, like, Drunk History with, with Lucky and SJ would be fucking sick, you like, know? There's there's so many opportunities right now. And it, the, the world is just like at our fingertips, right? Yeah. As players and as people in the community. And then it, it gives opportunities for other people who you know, might be newer or might be, you know, wanting to enter. It's like, all right, do some editing. Just find a top player and like edit a video for them and send it to them. Like that's how you get jobs. Hey, that's that that's the nation. 
that's literally the nation. He's grown his YouTube channel. Shout right. out to Vig. Yeah, huge shout out to Nation. Every time he pops up, I'm like, all right, he's I know he's a sick curator of, of these. And if uh, you don't know this, he's a he's the Tri-State Arcadian two winner. He beat me. I was so tight. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> is that why you brought it up, you bastard? No, no. I just love Vig, dude. I'm a nation nation fan. Nation. Okay? Yeah, I'm in the you're in the nation. I'm in nation. the nation nation. All right. <laughs> but that's exactly the point. It's like this is opened up and this is why melee is so slated to be like the best esport of all time is that it just is self it's a it's a perpetual motion machine it's like we generate the hype which generates the passion to work which generates the content which generates the hype it's like it's non it's never gonna end Mm -hmm. just get in there start doing shit and um it's like 2021 is it, it could be the new platinum what's even after platinum chrome no we're just rollback we're rollback the rollback baby. era yeah i guess so yeah Roll- it's it's the rollback era baby it really is and uh, that's pretty much if that answers the question of where melee should be headed in our opinions i, I you know i think up right <laughs> up yeah better content better gameplay like as i said like storyline as, as an ender it's the story better storylines but like the gameplay itself also is so distinct from what 2015 was like mm-hmm. it is it is a different game now and and that's the crazy thing and everyone's getting up to speed with it like yeah. watching zane's fox like he just nares and then crouches no <laughs> fox did that in 2015 yeah it's so it's you so know? simple dude. <laughs> it's so simple and that's the sickest thing but before we get into the new year and happy new year's everyone first of to all our listeners mm-hmm. we got to talk about our final question yeah which is, what was our favorite thing melee related that happened in 2020? Let's end back. It's a new year. Let's end back looking at the past a little bit and sure. reflecting and enjoying some of the good moments. So, JD, what was your favorite thing about 2020 melee related? It's really hard to skip past um, when June rolled around and and roll back just kind of brought us out of this like just really exploded on the scene and was just it felt like the, our hearts all just like flooded with joy of like oh my god mm-hmm. this is what we've been dreaming of since 2002 right like this is this is everything and it's remained to be that exciting and and it's not even fully f- decked out with features yet um but man that was that was a great day and and playing slippy and, and getting back into net play because it feels like melee again that needs to be said like that's z- that's like zero on the tier list right yes yeah that that is zero s <laughs> tier swedish delight in new jersey zero type things <laughs> exactly dark tooth in long island type shit yep. so besides that it would be um honestly very recently five days of melee it was um you know having the perspective of seeing it come together um watching all these people that frankly i've never heard of but i've seen their work for years on the toing side on the content side um watching it be organized with not just a passion but with a competency like the skill that they have developed over time it was and, and matt dot zeb and, and walt and and juna and all these uh, so many people i'm not mentioning but i'm sure they've, they've gotten their credit somewhere like pulling together these these different acts and this content and the the tournaments and the talent and it was really inspiring to be like okay this isn't just like a sick game and and a uh welcoming and a warm community of friends like we are professionals we are amongst hardworking, talented smart people that can put together an event so quickly and and have it just be such a success like that whole arc um had its ups and downs for me personally i think it was a bit of an ego thing we'll talk about that at some point but we we talked about it also you're right (laughs) but we'll go back we'll go back yeah we should do a rewind episode that would be a fun special yeah sure yeah Uh, but regardless like watching that all come together was um uh, just another reminder of like doesn't matter where i end up in the scene or where where my journey takes me if i could be amongst these people i will grow as a person no matter what 
and um, it was just really refreshing to see that come together. It was, it was great. God damn, that hit me in the feels, dude. <laughs> it's true though. That, was, that I know. Great way to end the year. Yeah. No. God damn. I wish I said something first because because that should have ended the episode. <laughs> you, you threw it to me, brother. <laughs> I that's that's my fault. Um. Yeah. Well, favorite thing for me is something more personal, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like it's, um. I think the start of the year, like, <clears throat> how do I, how do I phrase it? I mean, so much has happened outside in my, in my real life in 2020. And, and I've been pretty open about it on Twitter and, and with you and on the podcast about it. So I think I don't, I, you know, but that's not melee related, but everything's melee related. So yeah. I think, I don't know. I think that I, for 2020, like in a more general sense, like <clears throat> I have to, I have to give a shout outs to HNC season one, you know, like that that time for me was a lot of personal growth a lot of confidence building that i didn't have before and like because of the results i made and the work that i put in you know i i've become such a different person and it's really affected me both like on a like on in my personal life but also like in what i realized i love doing and and what kind of content i want to make and and stuff like that and like to that's the sort of the broad overview, but in, in more detailed specifics, like I think I've always been chasing sort of trying to be a good player, always being player focused. And and we know that I, I you know, we, we've had talks about that, mm-hmm. how I always will be a player first before a content creator, before a TO, anything like that. And it just felt like HNC season one was accumulation of everything I was building up to uh, starting from, you know, small, small breakouts in, in, in the summer of 2019 and, you know, beating Smuckers, beating Smokey, beating Pano, so many great players to make it on beating me, being you for the first time. (laughs) Right. I beat you for the first time. I beat Vortex for the first time getting fourth at HNC that, that incredible run, you know, um, pre HNC beating La Luna, you know, like, uh, um, it just felt so good. It, it it really started off the year right for me and, and really gave me a lot of confidence to know that I, I am capable of stuff that I set my mind to. And I think I like wanted, it was something that I've always wanted to believe in. And I think that's very apparent from episode one, you know, of the wannabes, mm-hmm. but it's not something I really believed till the end of HNC where I got barely, barely 14th. And, you know, from there, like I learned to video edit because I wanted to make a combo video with my name on it, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and you know, a little bit egotistical, but like that felt like the first tri state PR that like really meant something to me, you know, and from there it gave me the confidence to set for the job that I wanted later down the line to get like a career, you know, a, a job that I'm like, oh, this will actually be this is a career thing. It's not just like something to make money off of it gave me the confidence to stand up to my family when I needed to, you know, and yeah, it, I honestly, like, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little teary about this, but you know, it's, it's thanks to Melee that I, I got that confidence and, and H and I, you know, H and C season one was, was the accumulation of that. So, and, and the start of it all at the same time. So that's what I'm thankful for in 2020. I'm happy you brought it back. Cause it doesn't even feel like the same year. You know, yeah, I know. And and revisiting that, I remember, dude. I remember watching that run, and just, fe- and feeling it through you, like, cause, cause, yeah, I, I got to to hear everything leading up to it for, for a year, right? Like we, yeah, we've been talking <laughs> that all of 2019, and um, it just, you know, it, it obviously sucks what happened in March, and yeah, we've we've had to kind of. H- figure out our our path since but that um for that period of time it was like it really felt like all was right and it was really exciting seeing your journey and and colliding with everyone else's journeys as well it's like we're all mixed into this like beautiful tapestry um but you're the only one who got it documented so let's go yeah yeah i mean (laughs) That's the point of this podcast, the document. Yeah. And and I'm really thankful that you know I got to share it. I'm sharing this journey with you. And it's almost so poetic that this episode where we're talking about all of this 
is because of the start of HNC season two. So yeah. shout out to Hacks on that. Yeah. Uh, it's it's like all like it just makes sense. It just of course, and it's snowing out. I don't know how that's relevant, but it's somewhat. It's, it's not be. for me, but it, it's somewhat here. Well, it is for me. you know, uh, to meme a little bit at the end, as as Toph and Scarlet says, it's it's all a loop. It's all a fucking loop, man. Mm-hmm. Yep. Life, as they say in Arrested Development, life is a roofy circle. <laughs> all right, let's edit on that. <laughs> <laughs> this has been an amazing episode. Oh in my man, opinion. this was fun. I've had so much fun. Yeah, so. Once again, man, I love you. Love you too, buddy. We'll, we'll talk next week. Whew. All right. Catch you later. Thanks for the questions, Moe's and Cypher. Uh, see you next time. Yeah. If you have questions, feel free to just message me or JD on our Discord or on Twitter. We'll take either. We'll Absolutely. answer any questions. All right. Bye. Bye. Peace. That, I, I, I felt like I was getting lost oh, in the sauce awesome there. That, that was a strong segment. That was a strong first half, I have to say. Yeah, that was. I, I felt the energy coming back. Like that was, that was passionate. And it's yeah, it, yeah, yeah, dude. I'm so happy we're like documenting your entire box journey, like in real time. It's so juicy to me. Like it's so awesome. This mm-hmm. this this type of stuff doesn't exist. Like you are the. I you're probably the only person who's like by the like by the week just being like this is my box journey this is my first tournament this is my box box diary number one box diary number two (laughs) dude it's actually super hype like it's so different i i fucking love it um yeah we we skipped our friendly session recap we kind of talked about it though right Eh, it's fine it's fine we'll we'll have more friendly sessions yeah uh it was sick though it was sick we can we can roll it in the post credits like after after the ending song when we play the when on YouTube the thing goes like subscribe and look at this new video or look at this related video we can have this as like a like a, as an end credit thing that we're talking about oh, be... like this like this right now yeah like this right now oh, that man. would be really funny <laughs> well now i feel like, like you... i'm back on camera <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean that's that's the fun thing i mean if it's good we we add it in the back if it's not good we just roll out with the music